Welcome back to the greatest knockout series in YouTube history. Punches that will never be forgotten. In this series, we dig through our personal archive to unearth some of the single greatest punches that have ever landed in a boxing ring. Hopefully, by now, most of you have seen part one and two. And for those of you that didn't get to see part one before it got pulled for copyright, by the time you finish watching this, it should be back up for everyone to enjoy. Boxing Legends TV, highly suggested channel. Great channel. If you enjoy this series, please remember to hit the like button as it really goes a long way in helping this channel grow. During the summer of 2000, two fighters, Ben Tacky and Roberto Garcia, were both in the rebuild stages of their careers. Nothing but a victory would get things back on track, and entering the 10th and final round, Garcia was ahead by a wide margin on all three of the judges' scorecards. Tacky knew he needed a knockout to win, but he did more than just knock him out. He spun his head around and earned the Ring Magazine KO of the year. When Evander Holyfield ventured to the heavyweight division in the late 80s, he had some huge boots to fill. I realized that eventually I was going to fight Mike. He's the only person that I watched always fight. The former cruiserweight champion ran through his first six opponents with ease, and when he met the Mike Tyson conqueror James Buster Douglas for his first world title shot, he ended him swiftly with a perfectly timed straight right counter. In the long list of videos from my channel, I think this might be the very first time putting together some butterbean footage. You're tough, I'm tough, it's gonna be a hell of a fight. Butterbean was pretty much a freak show in sports entertainment. He competed in boxing, kickboxing, MMA, and even WWE events. There was a small period of time in the late 90s where the WWE actually featured real boxing on their shows after the fallout of Iron Mike. And it was here where Butterbean landed one of the most savage overhand rights you'll ever see on the unfortunate Bart Gun. It must have been exciting for Jim Ross to commentate on a real contest for once. During the fallout of the heavyweight champion Rocky Marciano in the mid-50s, a new face emerged, one who appeared much faster and visibly skilled than anyone before him, Floyd Patterson. Wow. In 1956, Patterson became the youngest heavyweight champion of all time at 21 and held that record for 30 years before Mike Tyson broke it. However, Patterson's journey as a champion came to a halt when he was beaten up and brutalized by the heavy-handed and undefeated Ingemar Johansson in 1959. The rematch was scheduled a year later, and the bookmakers rightfully had Patterson as an underdog going in. But he got his revenge, and he got it in brutal style. No, I specifically didn't want to do that. I didn't want to make any mistakes in this fight. I didn't want to give anyone a chance to say that I was a dirty fighter or anything else. Floyd Mayweather has never been known for having concussive punching power, and it's mainly due to his hands slowly breaking down over a long and prosperous career. But he shocked the boxing world in 2007 when he matched up with the 43-0 ultra-aggressive Ricky the Hitman Hatton. Hatton tried his best to rub up Floyd for the early rounds, but it didn't phase Floyd, and in round 10 he set the perfect trap for that check hook. Joe Calzaki is 44 and up. He's been for side Check that left hook. A check left hook right, right left into it. You never saw it. Four. Four. Uh, Emmanuel said that Ricky brought out the best in you. Well, I guess he did. <laughs> uh, All right, thank you. That's for sure. We've had some funny looking faces on the canvas in this series so far. Shocked, stunned, and some even zombified. Anders Eklund also fits well in this category after taking a brutal overhand right from Tim Witherspoon in their 1989 anyway, clash. When a big shot like this lands on the temple, it's simple, game over for anyone. 
I know this one will still be fresh in the memory for many viewers here today, but there was something about the ferocity of it that gives me the impression it will live on for a long while to come. In the end, at the end of the night, I win every single time. I do all my visualization and I always win. In January of 2017, the pound for pound unbeaten star Mikey Garcia moved up to lightweight to challenge for Dehan's Latikanen's WBC title. Between them, they had 57 wins and zero losses. Someone's O had to go. The term blink and you'll miss it is a bit overused in today's game. How about blink and you'll score the luckiest knockdown of your career? Well, that's exactly what Danny Garcia did to the speed demon Amir Khan back in their 2012 unification clash. Khan is extremely sharp. Khan was dazzling him with his rapid hands throughout the first three rounds, and then Garcia swung for the fences. Khan somehow made it to his feet, but was stopped soon after. Sugar Ray Leonard was a phenom in his prime, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Sugar Ray, look at those hands, the unending combination. Pound for pound, one of the fastest boxers ever. But unlike a lot of other quick-fisted fighters, Leonard used to put a lot of weight behind his shots. Perhaps none landed better in his entire career than when he nearly took Dave Boy Green's head clean off in their welterweight title bout in 1980. The way Leonard used his full body to generate the power is frightening. Literally, his feet were off the ground. Meet Randall Bailey, the boxer that goes by the nickname The KO King, and it's certainly not a fabrication. With 39 knockouts in his 46 wins, I think it's fair to say he is one of the most underrated punchers of the modern game, and here are my picks for his top three KOs. Enjoy. Klitschko is one of the biggest and scariest heavyweight boxers of all time. People like to downplay his resume and refer to his style of boxing as boring, which is fair enough, but you can't say anything about the man's brutal punching power. He has 25 world title defenses with most ending by knockout. But for me, the single greatest punch he ever threw was against Kubrat Pulev in 2014. The perfectly placed camera allows us to see the skin ripple on Pula's face as his head hits the canvas, and the 60 frames per second capture always looks great in slow motion. Has anyone ever wondered what happened to Jermaine Taylor? In 2005, he became the undisputed middleweight champion by outmaneuvering the Hall of Fame legend Bernard Hopkins. A few years later, he was battling away against the likes of Kelly Pavlik, Carl Froch, and Jeff Lacey. In 2014, however, I never lose to another white boy. Fuck you. Yeah, it seems like he might have lost his mind a bit, and I've got a weird feeling it had something to do with his truly devastating knockout loss to Arthur Abraham in 2009. Check it out. Just in case you didn't hear it, listen closely to the horrifying noise coming from Taylor as he lays on the ground. Oh, 
James Tony was the man in the early 90s. He was known for being the slickest of all slick fighters around. He could box, punch, slip, slide with staggering ease, and by July of 94, he had built up a record of 45 fights unbeaten, which was the longest streak in the world at the time after Julio Cesar Chavez had just lost his ridiculous 90 unbeaten streak a few months prior. Tony's challenger for the night was Prince Charles Williams, who put up a valiant effort for 12 rounds before having his body bent in half from a perfect straight right. The 2003 toe-to-toe -to -toe thriller between Rocky Juarez and Antonio Diaz had everything a fight fan could ask for. Controversy, blood, an enormous amount of punches landed, and to top it off, a jaw-dropping knockout of the year by the trailing Rocky. The People often talk about the speed and power of a prime Mike Tyson, and for good reason. Tyson, Tyson, laying it on, pouring it on, down goes Bruno, into the ropes! The guy was incredibly skilled in both departments. When he faced Reggie Gross in 1986, he proved patience as the key in finding the knockout as he dodged a dozen punches before letting one of his own bombs out. I only found out about this knockout recently while researching for one of my videos, and there is no better feeling than finding a hidden gem like this. Check out this brutal one-punch knockout upset from Darnell Wilson on David Rodriguez from their 2013 Rodriguez clash. Rodriguez has never lost. 36 and 0 in his career. Hey, it's all over. He's this over. fight's over. Wilson is knocked him out. This fight's over. over. 10 seconds left. Darnell Wilson. Wow. And the final round has knocked. There will always be a divide between the fans on which fighter throws the best left hook in boxing history. Some say Mike Tyson, others say Joe Lewis, but for me personally, it's between Joe Frazier or Tommy Morrison. These two knocked out too many men to name with a left hook, so here are my picks for the top 10 between them. face a right hand. There's a left hand, Jake goes down and probably out. Close to exhaustion, and Frazier unfurls this left hook. We thought we would end the video by bringing you a boxer's perspective on the anatomy of a punch. Deontay Wilder is undoubtedly one of the hardest punchers in the world today. In fact, he might be the hardest puncher between every living human being today. With 38 knockouts and 39 wins, there are many to choose from, but the punch on Arthur Spilka might be the greatest of them all. He did that same look that he'd been doing through the first round all the way to the ninth round. So and I knew where his head was going to be. So when I saw it, time he made that move, I was on it. When I hit him, it was, it was so sharp on his chin, it was like slicing, like slicing a thin piece of cheese. I barely felt anything. I felt the, the graze off it. I think, personally, I killed him three to five seconds. You know, I didn't see him breathing. His chest wasn't, he wasn't inhaling, exhaling. I didn't see no movement with the chest. I think for three to five seconds of his life, I think, I think, I think he died. Yeah, we need immediate medical attention to Archer Spilka.